All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Is there any amendments to the agenda or can we approve as written? I don't have any changes. So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We have our first appointment here. Do you have anybody else that's pending with you or just yourself, teacher? No. All right, let's talk about the pool then. So in your packet, you'll see that DG provided you with an estimate from Rick Pettit and um, this one I circled for the 500 to $600,000 for the um, Gunite mm -hmm. folks. So um, as I said in my note, that um, Dietrich can give you the history of the current fiberglass, you know, and she she has talked to these guys, so she can fill you in on the details. So I just gave him what you gave me. All right. So um, Rick Pettit has been taking care of our fiberglass for years. As a matter of fact, his father put the original fiberglass on the pool in 1995 and uh, gel coated it at that time. And then they re gel coated it the entire pool in 2010. Last year, Rick Pettit um, was very ill and was not able to do any maintenance on our pool, um, but he's back and I don't know for how much longer he's going to um, be, a, you know, be in this industry of gel coating and doing fiberglass work. And he is the only one that he knows of in the state that does his work. Um, so he said, it's really time for us to think about what we're going to do with the fiberglass moving forward. <clears throat> Before this, Teresa and I had talked about, uh, gunite, switching the entire pool to a gunite, which is a sprayed concrete that they make nice and smooth and really nice. And that would be my dream. Um, but the reality of gunite pool is they're very, very, very expensive. Um, and it would take us many years to save, I think, for that. So does that also have to be the salt water? No, it doesn't have to be salt water, but salt water will extend the life of the gunite much better than chlorinated water will. And honestly, you know, in my opinion, for what it's worth, in the future, you know, chlorine is getting so expensive and um, we go through a lot of it. Um, it might be worth thinking about it down the road, uh, switching, the, converting the pool from a chlorine pool to a saltwater pool. It's kind of expensive at the startup, but then it's way less expensive to maintain. But anyway, that's a different subject. So, this year, we have to do some work on the fiberglass regardless. And so in front of you, you have three different price quotes for pool work. The first would be the $4,350. Um, oh, let me preface this first. Rick uh, Pettit has been taking care of this pool for years, and they've never, ever, ever, ever charged more than $250 a year to fix our fiberglass. Never, because he just loves the Bethel pool. He believes in public pools and he wants us to maintain it for as long as possible. And so, I mean, he's slitting his throat by doing that, but he does it out of the kindness of his heart. So I made sure when he gave us this quote that he actually gave us a true quote, including his labor time. And he promised me he did, but I'm still not sure that he really did do that. Um, so the first one would be what we typically do, uh, which is, well, not typically, typically all he does is come in and fix the cracks. That's it. Um, in the fiberglass. And, but this year he, he wants to do an entire, um, washing of the pool because the gel coat gets really, really dingy and it really gets gross looking and no matter how much we clean it it just doesn't shine and sparkle and look really inviting so he said he could do the tsp and i don't remember what that means right now but it's something that he has the product he has to put on the gel 
before he acid washes it to protect it. Then he will, he'll do a really deep clean and just patch the repairs on the upper slope. So the upper slope is the, the zero entry. It always gets cracks in it because it's just a thin coat of fiberglass. Uh, you know, if someone steps on that fiberglass, it's got a bubble underneath it, it cracks. Um, the second one and the third one is really where I'm leaning because thinking forward thinking, um, the second one would be this, the cleaning, two layers of fiberglass mat uh, with one coat of gel just on the first 16 feet. So that whole um, zero entry slope of the pool be 28,000. 29,000. The third one really is the, is the one that I think would be, make the most sense. If we're going to invest 28,000, I would suggest we go to the 35, which he will do a really, really heavy duty coating of fiberglass, which he will then extend. He will cut all along the um, shallow end between where the pool starts and the asphalt is. He will cut down about a foot and he will put a fiberglass, a sheet of fiberglass around that whole zero entry edge and then bring it well into the pool. Then put a really heavy duty fiberglass coat over all of that first 16 feet. Because our theory is over the years is that the water, the slope, the pitch to the pool is not great. So it pitches the water run, you know, it rains, the water runs to the edge of the pool, kids are splashing in the water, the pool comes out of the pool and it hits that edge and the water goes down and then it gets under that fiberglass and it creates those great big pockets, which when then a kid or an adult steps on that pocket, it cracks the pocket. So he is suggesting that if he goes down a foot, which he's never, he's never done at this pool, at our pool, go down really a foot and then carry that over the edge and then do a really thick coat over and then gel coat the entire pool. Um, the gel coating will buy us, and this fiberglass, this really thick fiberglass he puts on, he said will buy us easily 15 years. The gel coat, 12 plus years, depending on you know how well we maintain it. Um, really, the gel coat gets dingy because the water gets gross after about a week of non-chlorinating. It sits gross all winter. It's gross all spring. No matter how well we power wash that in the spring and how much chlorine we put in that water during the season, it, you know, after a while, it just gets kind of dingy. So that is the, um, that's the fiberglass option. The quick on the gunite You'll see this big price here, total cost, 833000 This guy went a little crazy. It's not, it's not what I sent him. Um, there's only one commercial gunite guy in the area. He's in Massachusetts. Not There is a gunite guy in Sharon, Vermont, but he does not do public pools. He only does little privates. Um, I sent the guy the, the, uh, the dimensions of the pool, uh, last summer, late last summer, told him exactly what we wanted, same footprint, blah, blah, blah. He sends me this crazy design. Mm -hmm. I take this crazy design home to my husband and I say, you know, as far as the what our pool looks like and what he has designed, is it still about the same square footage, still same amount of materials? And Paul said he felt that it was pretty darn close. So, so the cost of the gunite alone is probably going to cost five hundred to six hundred thousand dollars to do our pool. 
the big 800,000 that's, you know, this elaborate patio that he designed. It's the surface prep. It's the getting rid of the pool, old pool. Um, it's all the electrical work because once we build a new pool, we got to make sure, you know, we'd have to be up to code mm -hmm. with all the electrical and stuff. Um, that does not include, to my knowledge, uh, new plumbing around the whole outside of the pool, which we are going to need sooner than later. So that's what I have. Um, there's only one other really quick thing that I think you should know is that um, both Bob Walker, <laughs> excuse me, he does all the plumbing at the pool and Rick Pettit, the fiberglass guy are both in agreement that we do have leakage in the um, exchanges within the pool. So that means we don't know exactly how much that's leaking, um, but it does mean that there's compromised plumbing around the pool, which yeah, we talked to Richard today and they, Tim had installed the meter there. So what we were curious was if we refiberglass the pool and all the cracks and stuff were taken care of in the pool, Richard can tell us what our loss was last year. Obviously, it was some evaporation, this and that, but he'd be able to tell once the pool was recoded, how much are we losing? And then we'd have a better idea of how much we're losing in the to the plumbing because we don't now it's a combination. We're losing water to the plumbing, we're losing water to the fiberglass, but Rick did explain how even if Rick does the fiberglass, we can still dig around the pool. Uh, obviously, the contractor would have to be careful, but we could do the plumbing at you know at a future. And not this fiberglass. Yeah, I asked him if the vibration from the equipment would hurt it. He said absolutely not. He said the only thing that really have to be we'd have to be really careful about is removing the asphalt around that that whole um, zero entry. Um, but he said, you know, the new new concrete could be poured, the concrete guy could absorb any of the irregularities with his pour. So- We don't have hard and fast numbers on the plumbing. Okay. The um, last year I did talk to Bob Walker about the plumbing and he said, as you're looking at the pool, those of you who are familiar with it, the asphalt, when you come off the new pavilion, the blue painted asphalt, that's all new plumbing when they did the new pavilion. Mm -hmm. But everything beyond that blue asphalt and around the pool is all decades, decades old. And, um, and, and so he said that that would be where the problem is. And and we know it, we see it because when we fill the pool um, and we have, um, it's, he explained it to me around the returns, that's where we're losing. That's where we're losing some water. But we lose on average an inch a day just in evaporation, an inch. And then, and then when we have our big groups there in the summer, you know, 50 plus kids in an afternoon, we lose a lot of water with kids coming in and out of the pool as well. So there would be some real um, variables in that, in those numbers, is, you know, as to loss. Mm -hmm. So I had a couple of questions. So the um, the difference between, we'll call it option two and option three, I know option three, sound like if we went with that, then we would get a 12, 12 years on the gel coat and 15 years on the fiberglass. Um, if we went with just option two, what what kind of longevity are we getting out of the pool on that one, minus the gel coat? Uh, he said the he would have to he would gel coat the upper new the the deep end would be the old gel coat, and so the new would last longer than the the old. But he said generally. You, the gel coat will last longer than 12 years. It just starts to look really dingy after about 12 years. And it almost sounds like, without you directly asking us, it sounds, it, I get the impression that you want to do option three, and that option should get the town a dozen years down the road. 
and and we need to start making a decision on if we want to a dozen years from now it sounds like we're probably going to have to go with a new pool is that kind of well i don't foresee rick being around right uh, uh, I so mean, so we kind of have to at this point if we invest invest in that 12 years then we need to start putting some money aside if we want to invest it or have a pool in 12 years from now and that's the thing is we don't know i mean this year we're going to be able to do lessons but getting lifeguards has been very tricky mm -hmm. getting young people that are um certified to teach swimming lessons and in 12 years are the taxpayers still going to want a pool you know we just don't know maybe they're going to decide they want that to be a community center record i don't really know what the i think it would be it would be interesting to obviously have the rec committee do an updated survey about what one of the questions to be yeah. about the future of the pool. And the second question is obviously, what do they want to see next? Because I mean, the old survey is- It might be something to bring to the voters at the next town meeting to mm -hmm. say, you know, let's assume that we do go for it and we do things now to, to, to make some longevity on the pool, but we may want to bring it to them and say, you know, here's a design that we need to invest. Because right now, if we just continue with the ten thousand dollars a year appropriation, that just that just goes into a general right fund, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. and I think what at this point we kind of need to do like skateboard park where we designate that money towards a pool. Now, who knows? Ten years from now, we might all sit here with half a million dollars set aside and say, you know what, the pool thing isn't working, right? And mm -hmm. we're gonna take the money to do something else. But at least we've saved that money. Yeah. I think it might be something that we need to start thinking about. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think it's because Gunite becomes the product and the only choice, the cost may decrease yeah. too. Yeah, or, right. or things could be more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm trying to be optimistic. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And then we'll have to, you know, we'll have more data if we did this about the we would have to dig up our bedroom. And that's always a trick too, figuring out, you know, if you can't start digging really around the pool till May, we're gonna open it, you know, it's trying to get all your ducks in a row. So if I was looking at this correctly, okay. um, in our account, it, it's in the, what I would say the general fund for the RIC account, yep. we have approximately like $90,000 in yep, there. Yeah, 93, yeah. And the other 90 is for the skate park. Yeah, I so. added in there. So, so we have a total of, if I took out the 35 for the fiberglass, the bigger one, mm -hmm. then we'd have 38,000 left. So um, if you added back in the 35, 425, that would be your, around 70,000. Okay. So. Yeah. So this, I only cut out a portion of their recent, I, I keep a spreadsheet now, for Ellie. So. Of the. Um... But I've taken out all the skate park money. Right. So other than the skate park, is there anything else that we are in the next year, two or three of no, planning that. over there that would be a part of that? Not that I'm aware of, no, because we- Money have, that we have saved currently? No, because we've done the, um, moved this, moved some of the equipment around. We um, have money from BOREC to do the um, walkways to the- to make it more handicap accessible. We have, um, so I can't think of anything. I mean, we got a new vacuum, a new pump, and, a, you know, I'm minus any unforeseen complication. I don't, you've got yeah, your you headboard, have, backboard, diving board. I mean, is there I mean, any, I, I mean, I've applied for every grant under the sun and we've got, we've got new ladders going in the deep end here and we've got a brand new, um, life-saving board. We put brand new sand and stone in the um, big filtration pumps uh, last, no, you're 21, fall of 21 after the pool season closed. That'll last another at least four years, if not longer. Um, so, I mean, we're in pretty good shape. I've tried to every year get a few things you know, with grant money so that it's in pretty good shape. Does anyone have a snap or plumbing around the pool? Um, Rob, um, Bob Walker does of what's under the newest asphalt closest to the pavilion. No, but he doesn't. No, but the Tracy's were the ones that did the plumbing around the pool originally, and I bet um, Rob Tracy would at least have an idea. I don't um, want to get that written down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, 
like Bob said, it all will need to be replaced anyway. So, I mean, it's probably not salvageable. The only thing I worry about is worst case scenario, what happens to our pool if we leave it, you know, go for many other years is, you know, where is it leaking? How bad is it leaking? Is it creating a big hole under the pool somewhere? I think what we have to do is this summer is focus on getting an estimate from Bob and get Rob, maybe get Rob Tracy and Bob Walker together if they could figure out what's there. And then we'll have an, you know, get an estimate to do it. And hopefully we can do that next year. Cause if we have, you know, 30,000 left and then we, you know, do more money at town meeting, hopefully. And I don't know what it would cost. To, you're going to want to, I don't think you're going to want to be May to do that. You're going to want to do that in the middle of August and as soon as you shut down. Well, I'm just saying is, yeah, not this, wait till May. Not this August, but next, I guess is what I'm saying to save up the money. By then this summer, we could have an estimate as to what it would cost to dig it up and and do that. So I don't know. It, it, um, so part, anyways. Part of me wants to, to say... If we're, while we're, quote, in construction, <laughs> if that isn't the best time to do the the plumbing, do it all at once, mm -hmm. uh, especially if it fits within that 30000 that we that we have. Yeah, I don't know what the cost would be. Uh, it, it just seems to me that it makes sense rather than having to dig it up later yep. uh, to to just do it and be done with it. If we know that it's leaking, let's bite the bullet. Yeah. That's part of, that's part of what I'm The hard thinking. part is we don't know how much I'm, I'm is plumbing and how much no, is... I don't think you have any idea. We don't. And I'm pretty we sure $30,000 won't buy the excavator. So no, I, I know. I'm just saying we, and we have no idea how much is leaking once we get the fiberglass <laughs> itself. You know, once that was done, we'd have a better idea. Just but because we don't know what the leakage is. You know, asking the Green Mountain Pipeline to come and see if they could scope. I, I don't know. Underneath to see if they could, can they line it like they do culverts? It was a pretty small pipe. I don't yeah. know they do that. I don't know either. We didn't know yeah, Richard asked us. And we didn't but didn't know. you say it's returns? It's, a lot of it is not piping. It's fittings in places where they are. Yeah. The PVC in the ground lasts a long time. Yeah, yeah and, and Bob said it would be the materials that would cost the money. It's going to be his labor or the labor for excavation and stuff because he said they will have to do it very gingerly. So is the pool all set for the summer or do you need no, this? No, I mean, some... this, the fiberglass issue needs to be resolved fairly quickly. Next week, we're pumping the pool. All week, so the and then as soon as we get the pool pumped, then Rick Pettit will come in because he he will need at least sixteen days. He said to do the thirty five thousand project, and at least twelve days to do the the choice B. And we open July fifth, and if we want the kids to even put their toes in, we want to get water in it by no later than the third week of June. Or it'll be so miserable, it won't be worth it. So the least thing we would have to do is the four thousand dollar fix for this year, and then either then either do the piping and the whole enchilada next spring. But do you think Rick will be around next year? I, I know. know, I know, and he's like the only one who does it, and he gives us such a good deal. It's can you do that at the tail end of the seat? I mean, can you? No, because we don't want to empty all the water out yeah. of it just to fill it back up again for right. the winter because you have to have the water in it to keep fiberglass right. in better shape. And that's, and see, this is the problem with the design <laughs> of our pool is we have to drop the water in the fall below the returns. So that leaves about that 16 feet mm -hmm. of fiberglass Open. without any water holding it down all winter long. And so then you've got that constant fluctuation of fiberglass in the the design just wasn't ideal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a great pool, but mm -hmm. it doesn't function the way it, it could function better. Yeah. It could function better. So, so it sounds like regardless of what we want to do right now, all we're going to be able to do right now is the first option. No, we no, could do, we could do Oh, you the, could do it all. Yeah. Okay. Oh. As soon as you know what option you need me to do, and I will book your pool 
ASAP. So, I mean, he could be in as early as the day after Memorial Day, he said, if, if he gets the go ahead. Um, but he would take the, you know, he would, it will, it will take several days. So in your opinion, it's makes sense to do the bigger fix and then just work with a contractor who knows what they're doing and tear, do the plumbing maybe next year. Um, and yeah, then we'll have a very on the plumbing at this point. Yeah. Really. I think the biggest concern really is what do we, what do we, what's our extended goal and what do we want to do with Rick? with the spider glass now while Rick is still here. Mm -hmm. It looks to me like you already have that <clears throat> as part of the balance of May. Yeah, well, I, I put it in put, just to make put sure. that in so yeah. we know what is left so, over yeah. with that already being in there. Yep, and that takes care of the skate park and all their money. So yeah, yeah so it's completes that. So and I can't remember. So if the pipes are leaking, where is the water going? And how is that impacting the pool? It's just going into the ground around the deep end of the pool. Which doesn't I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's going out of the pool in a trickle. I don't know if it's going. I mean, I would assume it is because, yes, we lose a lot of water in a day at the pool, but... Rick has assured me, Bob has assured me that we lose a good inch in a day, not to leakage. We're losing a good inch in a day due to just kids running in and out and evaporation. You know, so I I would imagine that we are, if I were to guess in my uneducated opinion, um, that we're losing more water to that than we are to actual leaking somewhere into the ground around that deep end of the pool. I had an in-ground pool years ago. Um, and yeah, between the kids coming out and the heat and everything else, it seems like every day or every other day we were throwing the hose in and we didn't have any leaks. It was just kids in and out, splashing cannonballs, water everywhere. It wasn't as big as this pool, but still we were losing and we were on well water, shallow well. So you know, and we had to be careful, but you lose water. Once, if this is done, then we'll have real numbers because right. Richard put out the meter. He knows what we ended at. He knows what we'll begin at. And then so we'll have a better idea. And then if we can say, OK, if we quantify how much gallon, you know, we think we're losing in that inch a day, what are we really think it's doing under there? So it may not be as bad as we think. So we just and don't know. Really, the plumbing around the pool is a bigger, a bigger, if we're going to plumb the pool, and Teresa and I talked about this at length, and I talked about this with Rob and the other guys. We need to get the grass all out of there too. So it's not yeah. just going to be a, a plumbing; it's going to be a, an excavation. Get the grass out, either asphalt all around the pool or cement all around that pool. Yeah. So it's going to be a bigger project and a bigger cost than just fixing the plumbing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because right now we mow inside the pool fence. It's kind of odd, but <laughs> anyway, so. So those are the numbers and um, your recommendation is number three. My recommendation is number three. We really want to get the best thing for our buck uh, and extend the pool longer so that we have time to really think about the future. I think, I mean, dollars to donuts here. The third one actually makes the most sense because you're actually getting more for your money in that one than you are for Yes, too. And we have money. Yes. Yes. And we have the, we have the ability to pay it. Uh, yes. Spend it. Mm -hmm. So what are we talking about? 38. Why are we talking about what? that? Because it needs, it needs to be done for our because people. um we have you are the only ones who have authority to spend capital fund money. So you guys have to appropriate the funding. We can't okay. do that. I was like, what do you mean? Why are <laughs> that's why, sir? Any further discussion, or if not, no. can you entertain a motion? I make a motion that we hire Rick Pettit to do option number three at $35,425 to fix the pool where it will last a good 12 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I would just add to that motion or amend that motion not to exceed 35425 yep. 
And I just want to, you know, just want to make it clear that there may be an occasion where we still will have to do a repair. I mean, just to the fiberglass, but we always had to be mine. And that was like a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah. And Richard did it last year and did a bang up job. Yeah, he did. Richard Manning did it last year. Yeah. yeah. So, did you get a second? No, oh, there's a motion on the table. We have a second. I'll, I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I have it. Good All right. Thanks, Luke. So you're going to let Rick know? Yeah. All right, thank you. Appreciate right. you coming over. Mr. Benson, you do you're up. Very good. Thank you for giving me a few minutes here tonight. Um, as you saw probably in your packet, you had some notes in there from the town meeting committee. All right. Uh, most in the recent past, dormant town meeting commi committee due to COVID, we, we had met for a few years. And just some of you guys, some of your folks here on the board um, may not know the complete history of it. Uh, it was formed, I think it was around 12 years ago, pretty much as a result of trying to find solutions about meeting here and when we held town meeting once this building was completed, uh, to try to alleviate some of the issues with getting folks in here. Um, and it kind of, that's that was our focus back then. Um, shortly after that, um, when Carl Russell was chair of the board, he, he approached us about becoming more of a um, more involved committee for a various amounts of town affairs over the course of the year, uh, sponsoring discussion groups, et cetera, which we did uh, for a couple of years. And then our focus turned to the operator's manual. So I don't have a meet tonight, but I think you've all seen. Mm -hmm. That was a rather lengthy project, um, getting that together. And that was finally developed. And I picked up the, the uh, manuals from the printer uh, March of 2020. So, mm -hmm. um, and you know what happened then. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we really haven't met since then. But um, our... Now that, and um, our focus as town meeting approached this year uh, took a big hit with uh, the loss of uh, Davis and Victoria, who were basically the heart and soul of, of the committee, Victoria especially. Davis had, had uh, actually resigned a little bit before the manual was completed, but um, so we really didn't do a very good job this year for town meeting. Um, there were some gaps in what uh, could have made that a little better. Uh, it wasn't terrible, but still. Um, the good thing was that there was a, a, a good push of energy from that, and we've had some interest. We have some new members, and we're also getting more um, inquiries about doing, again, what we had done back at Carl's request of going beyond just town meeting, um, trying to create civic involvement throughout the whole year. Um, back in, I think it was 2014-ish, we had Susan Clark come and speak to us um, about um, town meeting and civic involvement. She's the author of All Those in Favor with Frank uh, Bryan. Uh, this is a pretty extensive study of town meeting, the history of it, and why shouldn't uh, fall by the wayside. Um, but, and she also is the, the uh, town moderator in the town of Middlesex. They had, they have the only uh, operator manual for citizens at that time. And um, that's who gave us the blueprint for our manual. Um, and so she came and spoke. We, we got that idea from her then, and that's where the manual came from. Um, so we're now looking to uh, Rebecca's, uh, St. Martin Stone, who worked, who is on our committee, also involved, as you know, in many, many other things, uh, works with Susan, <clears throat> has been working recently on creating, um, workshops within towns that are having this question between, do we stick with town meeting? Do we not? Do we go all Australian diet, ballot, et cetera? So um, we're we're not, we're working with her to come in the fall after the Ford Festival to um, have another um, discussion night 
when you invite people in, maybe have a potluck, we'll see. Um, and then have a couple of workshops, possibly the format is evolving. Um, so just to, you know, basically what I'm doing here is just letting you know what our plans are, that we're back active again. Um, Gene has spoken to me about uh, a, a, con a concern he has as far as um, climate change and um, having some discussions on that within the town, a workshop uh, session along those lines to get public input about what the town maybe could do. And there's been some other ideas um, spoken of as well. So it looks to me like our, our committee's going back to that uh, step two that we went through to try to um, foster discussions in town about topics. And I'm also bringing this to your uh, attention in case you, you guys um, hear a lot more about concerns and what people are bringing to with, with concerns. And if there's anything that, that we can maybe uh, take up along those lines, um, that would be great to pass along to us. Um, you know, we're thinking like, well, first the, the thought would be something like quarterly uh, events, but there may even be a need for more than that. So um, we're gonna start with with uh, Susan Clark in the fall um, and then um, work into Gene's re request and, and others as we go. Um, so that's new when you saw the minutes in there, you wonder where we had been. Uh, that's kind of a quick, um, a wrap up of, of the history of the town meeting committee um, and where we're hoping we'll go from here. So you'll be hearing more from us. We'll be talking to you. We may, um, right now, our formal name is the town Me meeting improvement committee. Uh, we may have that as maybe a subcommittee and maybe be uh, some sort of a change our name a little bit to be a little more involved as far as citizen involvement. Important. Um, encouraging citizen involvement, some sort of, we're working on on that name as well. But um, So that's really all I have. But if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer anything as far as where we are. But They did get your um, a uh, letters from Lisa McCrory, Karen Bixler, and Liley to, okay. so to be appointed. So those did end up in the packet too. So, and yeah. I did have Kelly print out those minutes and put them in. So yes. <laughs> you're all set. Okay. And as you read through the minutes, these, these are the draft minutes. There are a few little um, irregularities in there. Um, Carl Russell was not our original member, but was the select board chair at that time. But those will be corrected at our next meeting. So anyway, thank you very much for your time. And thank you uh, for doing what you do here. Well, I think it's great. I'm excited you guys are going to do that and bring someone in and do the workshops and to talk about town meeting. And mm -hmm. it's gonna. I talked to Pam a little bit about she was talking about town meeting and we talked about education. And I know, like I said, it's been a while, but this secretary of state used to have a program to get into school so that teachers could teach kids about that. So <clears throat> we were going to look into that. So I, I think there's some opportunity for, you know, definitely for. We had some great ideas with maybe um, someone from Bernie Sanders here on Vet yeah. Veterans Affair kind, kind of make you our town meeting thing, but also have some other important things there yeah. that people can, We'll yeah, we talked from. about maybe like Veggie Van Gogh and then, you know, Bernie Sanders, or is there any sort of um, other like aids, aid that could be there present to talk to people since people are coming to town meetings, to try to get more, you know, assistance out there. So I think it's great. I think we'll do great work. And I know, it, I know it's um, a little tougher now that the high schools in Royalton, but it would be nice to somehow encompass you know, the 18 year olds, um, that will be graduating, you know, I mean, you, at least when I was younger, you know, they, that used to be kind of a big deal was, you know, when you were 18 or your senior year, you know, that the, um, you know, the town clerk of the, of the town would get involved with the school and you'd have like a, um, voter registration, voter day. registration yeah, day, of course, it. you know, boys had your draft card you know there was all those different things that went on and mm -hmm. it'd be nice to somehow i know it's tough because they're on they're over there now but somehow if we could maybe bring that in as one you know maybe through the um I'm forward sure. fast maybe we could advertise a you know i mean pam and carmen photo registration go into or, the lobby and have a sign up one day that's what we used to do we just meet and do a sign up and people come or, or you could talk to if they have a 
high, you know, a history class or something as seniors that they have to take. That's always a good time mm-hmm. to speak to them. But I'm talking like talk to Pam. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. You just, they have they don't have civics over there. They have global citizenship or something like that. Oh, global, yeah. I think. So that might be. I don't know. Maybe talk yeah. to Rick in that. Yeah, well, Pam. Part of our discussion was to try and talk with Kirk White or somebody to work on the legislative end to try to bring civics back to local involvement. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's so that, that gets people involved right. uh, in the process in the whole political process. And there's no more uh, pure democracy than town meeting. So we were talking about possibly um, doing some sort of a mock town meeting for, for the um, students uh, as well as adults because there's a lot of people who have no clue. Um, so that's, those are good points that we, we, we've talked about those as well. Um, as you say, we had a yeah. list of things that, that we're thinking about and trying to work on, but, um, it's definitely, if we can work that into the school somehow, that'd be super. Um, and even if we, even at the middle school level, uh, they, they're getting to that point where they should understand some of the process. Um, and I know there was years ago we had um, we had some school pages that we used for the town meeting. Remember that? That would go around and hand out the microphones and, you know, kind of gets them involved a little bit onto the the process of that yeah, meeting. They might not understand again. the exact topics, but they, they get that right. atmosphere. And that right. might be something that we could reach out and see if we could get some pages for the next town meeting or something like that. That'd be kind of neat. That's, that's on the list of things yeah. to do. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, you know, it's um, a little bit, uh, I have a little trouble, bit of trouble, but there's also funding over there available to actually pay them to do that. Um, I think that's, I think they should be taught that that's civic involvement and kind of their, what they're seeing is, is what, citizens feel is their, um, what they're obligated to do is to be there and be um, mm-hmm. present in their town, make decisions in the town and not just sit back and throw darts after the fact. And, mm-hmm. become, and, that, and that was another thing that we had done in the past uh, was we sponsored or we, we uh, publicized like your budget meetings, both for the select board and the school board when they were here um, to make sure people knew that now's the time to get involved to when, when the budget's being laid out rather than at town or school meeting when there's a lot of questions that are asked that should have been asked back months ago when it started. And people, a lot of people aren't aware of the process. So um, that, again, is something that um, we'll be focusing on to get get the word out again, even if, even if it's just front porch forum or uh, Facebook um, just to let people try to get that word out through social media more. Nice. So if you want to be involved, now's the time. Perfect. Good. Yep. So, All right. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you. you very much. Appreciate it. Yep. All right. Yeah. Owen, do you have um Anybody else you're waiting on for this evening? Are you doing it solo? It's a one man truck. Brave man. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I'm Owen Bannon McCarter. I'm a part of the Equity and Inclusion Committee and our task. Oh, uh, and that's what way of putting the packet. Ah, so, okay. Love it. So, Thank you. That's what this looks like. Beautiful. Um, so as you know, we applied for and got this um, Equitable and Inclusive Communities Grant, which was through the Vermont Community Fund and the Vermont Office of Racial Equity last year. I think we were awarded in December. Um, and that is to fund a bunch of community learning opportunities in our town um, and um, is really exciting. I think the um, VCF and the Office of Racial Equity are very excited that Bethel applied, and we are kind of the type of town that they're really wanting to bring into this um, statewide equity work. So um, part of our proposal in that grant was to start a book group in our town, which we felt would kind of meet some of the needs that we heard from you all and from the community of just having more spaces where we can be in dialogue with each other, ask questions, learn from each other, not really have any specific agenda besides um, 
the actual process of just being in community with one another and talking about issues of equity. Um, so that group is kicking off um, and we have our first book group happening um, on May 30th at 5.30. We've partnered with the Bethel Public Library and they are super excited to be doing this um, for the full year with us. So we're planning on actually doing the book group um, gathering at the library, but right now we have over 20 people registered. And so I actually think that that space might not be the best for that many people because we're also providing free childcare and free dinner, um, which is a part of kind of the model of equity of, you know, to make sure that parents can come, to make sure that folks who might, um, you know, not have the same access to food security can come to the gathering. We're trying to meet different needs. Um, so we might uh, we might actually look to do it here at the at the town hall um, because it is getting so big. Um, but I wanted to formally invite all of you to come. And I also, as part of the grant, um, we were able to buy books for everyone. Uh, we bought the books through uh, Yankee Bookshop, which is the longest running independent bookstore in Vermont. So we wanted to support them as well. Um, so we purchased the books through them. Um, and so I have a copy for each of you. Whether or not you're able to attend, we wanted to make sure that you had um, the resource as well. Um, the books uh, in our book series are all written by um, authors of color. Um, that was a part of our application, a part of the purpose of the grant. Um, so it's also uplifting writers of color in our communities. Um, and the books are gonna be different genres. So some will be fiction, some will be nonfiction, some will be young adults, some will, um, like this one be more academic. Um, so the book that we've picked for our first reading in, was selected by the Equity Inclusion Committee. We wanted to kind of build momentum forward as we get closer to Juneteenth and talking about the issue of slavery in our country and in, um, in Vermont. Um, so we did a um, presentation around the history of slavery in Juneteenth as a part of Bethel University hosted by our committee. This um, book is what we're reading, and then we're hoping to just kind of, you know, build that momentum as we get closer to the event. This was written by Harvey Amani Whitfield, who at the time he wrote it was a UVM professor. He's now teaching at the University of Calgary, but he was at UVM in the history department. Um, it's actually, even though it is literally a book, it's an, it's an essay, so it's only 46 pages long. It is academic. He's a historian, so you know, be prepared, um, <laughs> but <laughs> it's facts. Bring your um, later. <laughs> not necessary literature, yes. Um, so, um, and, and the book, The Problem of Slavery in Early Vermont is really focused on um, the fact that um, slave, slavery was happening in Vermont, just like it was in all other parts of, um, of what was becoming the United States um, in pre-colonial um, and colonial times in this area. Um, and then Vermont, which became um, the first uh, state um, was founded in 1777. And in our constitution as founded, we were also the first state to abolish slavery. Um, which is really significant, um, you know, at the time, especially in 1777, the concept of abolition wasn't really even being discussed. Um, and so it's pretty profound that we um, we did that. And also there's a lot of questions about why we did that um, and whether people knew about it and how it was enforced. And so, um, and the caveat of course, is that the abolition of slavery was for adult slavery. And we know that because just last year, um, we actually amended our constitution to eradicate all, all slavery in all ages. Um, but the interesting thing about this essay is just, we abolished slavery in Vermont and then slavery persisted. So we still have incidents of people being enslaved. Some were very public. Um, oftentimes folks who had slaves were people that were judges and um, select board members and doctors, um, people who had wealth. And the slavery in Vermont didn't look like the way we might think of chattel slavery in the South. It wasn't, you know, huge plantations where we have a lot of um, indentured workers, but instead, you know, one or two or three people, many who lived in the house, maybe took care of children, maybe helped on a small farm, 
um, but still these folks were enslaved. And so the question is really, how did that happen? How did we abolish slavery? And yet we still had slavery. Um, and so it's really uh, interesting um, question about enforcement and about whether, you know, laws change society or society change laws um, or both. Um, the book also has a lot of, um, what do they call it? Uh, original primary source material, I think is what they call it in uh, the historical world. So you actually have cases um, where folks are suing for their freedom. You have deeds, bill of sales for human beings um, that are all from uh, the Vermont Historical Society, which is who published this book. So it's really exciting. We'll talk about it, we'll learn. Um, again, there's no specific agenda. It's really just like the process of being together and talking about this and learning together is really what um, our committee is all about. So that's everything I have. Um, really excited to see some of you all there. And um, do you have any questions for me? Have you picked out the other folks yet? Well, I'm glad Leonard is here. Um, we have... <laughs> We have one book for sure picked out, which is um, our last in the quarter. So that'll be in January or February, I think is um, the winter quarter. Uh, we will be reading Leonard's uh, third book, um, which is not yet been published. It'll be coming out in the fall. Um, we have tentatively, we've talked about reading Octavia Butler's The Parable of the Sour for our next uh, reading. Um, part of that is because it's um, LGBT pride season and Octavia Butler was um, a black lesbian author who did science fiction. And so this is a science fiction novel, um, but it's kind of like a dystopian take on what the future could look like. It was written in the nineties and it takes place. It's the story starts in 2024. Oh, so wow. it's like now, but written then, you know, um, and then for um, for our third quarter, we don't have a book yet, but we are we want that book to be written by an indigenous author. Um, so there's some ideas out there about what it would be. Mm -hmm. Well, that's thanks. I was curious. So when did you start publishing? I mean, are you giving people normally like sixty days to read the book, or how are you? Yeah, I'm just curious. This this one. Um, it took us a while to figure out like the systems. How are we going to distribute the books? How are we going to you know create a registration form? Partnering with the library felt like a key component. Mm -hmm. um, so this didn't actually go live until mm, the beginning of May. <laughs> but it's also easier because it's a yeah. small, it's like a fifty-page yeah. book, so it's different. Right. So if you have a bigger book, you'll have more time. In. Oh, that makes um, sense. Oh, good. Yeah. So well, especially now that you have some picked out, it'll just be yeah. easier to roll them out and. Mm -hmm then that makes sense. I was just curious because I my, saw it and I was like, yeah, I hope this book isn't really thick, like, oh, no. you know, to have time to read it. So I was yes. just curious. Oh, my gosh. hope is the equity committee meets uh, next Tuesday. The book group is the one after. So I'm hoping that we will have confirmed that Octavia Butler. Book. Then you can order it. So then we'll know yeah. and we'll start building this kind of core group of folks, but continue to announce it. We do in the grant, we have money for advertising. So you'll see an ad in the Herald, the um, Bethel, Public Library also has a regular um, announcement section in the Herald, so they've announced it as well and are tapping into their resources. But it's super cool because the books are free, free food, free childcare. Yeah. And we've already heard from several parents like, oh, I wouldn't have been able to come if you hadn't provided childcare. So that's super cool. Yeah. Um, if you don't think you're able to do it at the library, you should reach out to Kelly pretty soon to see if this building is available. She's the keeper yeah. of the calendar. So okay. just to make sure. Totally. Even if you want to reserve it, like just in case, yeah, you might you could. I don't know. I'm not sure off the top of my head if anybody's here. So yeah. Okay. Cool. And yeah, yeah. keep spreading the word. I've already ordered more copies of the book. I ordered thirty, and we're out. Except wow. The yeah. Ones that are at the time office. office. Okay. Have. All right. I'll keep one for Lindley. Okay. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. And does does the um the grant does it cover all four quarters of the readings, and will you have any monies available after that, or or how 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 is your group looking at going forward? I guess are you looking to fundraise or looking for money from the town or more grants or what are we thinking in the future? Um, we are looking for more grants in the future to continue to run this book club. Um. 
And I think it's one of those grants where once you apply for it, a bunch of other funding opportunities open up just within VCF alone. Um, so once we do our first grant report, I think we'll start actually having some, you know, data to show this is how many people attended the presentations we did at Bethel U. These are how many folks are coming to, it's also funding um, two meetups for young people. One is the BIPOC um, youth group and one is the trans and non-binary youth group. So that those are happening. Um, the trans one is happening weekly at the Arnold Block. So we're gonna have some actual data to show like, what's yeah. who's tapping into these programs and I think that'll help us apply for more funding and you also have a schedule with the 10,000 that they got and yes. the things that they were going to accomplish so there was kind of a layout and a rollout yeah. of budget and money and but I think you're right I think there's like a small and inspiring and I do think once you do it I think the state you know I think you will be able to find more grant money for sure yeah. the goal is to not have to tap into any town money <laughs> but to bring money to <laughs> yeah. yes <laughs> All right. Any further discussion? And you you were grabbing a copy for Lindley. Yep, yeah, I got yeah. Lindley's right here. Gotcha. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. Thank thanks, Owen. Thanks for coming. And we will open it up to public comment. So if there's anything that isn't currently on the agenda. Um, we'll do comment. I'll take the, there's two individuals in person, so we can do in comment, uh, in person first, and then second on Zoom. Who's first? You can go first. You can go, Sally, if you want. So. Just make sure, um, well, two things. If, if you haven't done so already, just make sure you sign in or out on your way out. So we have you for the- It's right over there on the left. For the minutes. Um, and then just, I mean, a lot of us know who everybody is, but just make sure that when you do your public comment, just say, say who you are and, and you can say where you live, like your address or something, if that makes it helpful for people to know. But same with the individuals online. Okay. So at long last, I am here. I am Sally Ornis and I came to Bethel in 2005, born and raised in rural central Wisconsin. And here I am. So my partner, Derek Underwood, found our apartment at 32 Avon Drive, across from Central Market, and we lived as tenants for 10 years. And then Derek bought the historic structure in the end of 2015. Um, the entire time I've lived here, I've been only a pedestrian. I am a licensed driver, but I am a pedestrian. So walking up and down Avon Drive gave me years of opportunity to notice all the um, details of the roadbed. So I'm here to speak about the roadbed, uh, which is in our eyes, uh, Derek and myself have evaluated the results of the uh, water project that was done a couple of years back. And it's our belief that the roadbed has changed to a degree that has forced me to come and make a public announcement here this evening. So without um, spending hours of speaking about um, our belief and the details involved, um, there are picture, there is one specific picture available for um, scrutiny as we've done with that and many other pictures. Um, and so the picture that is available um, at, with Chris is historically significant because it shows a, a major difference to the original roadbed from what it is today. And we have brought to the attention of people here in town about possibly taking that old survey that came to light some years back um, 1876, and um, it talks about laying out a roadbed of 20 feet, 10 feet either side of the center of the road. So center of the road um, in 1876 should be the same center of the road today. But in looking at that picture, it's pretty obvious that they're 
probably are some changes that somehow happened over the years. Um, when we bought the place, the first thing that I was alerted to as a now um, owner of the historic property, the one corner of the house on the north side, as you come around, you're very close to the building and one of the pillars. And I just didn't think that that was the way it was originally laid out. Um, back in those days, everything was pretty expansive if you had a structure like that. So I had spoken to a couple of individuals and nobody was really giving me too much feedback. Um, and it's kind of happened today that with the road work that was done, we've encroached even more. So I'm kind of forced to come out with what I um, have to look at and live with um, in my immediate life. So we've had a couple of incidents with um, very large equipment coming off the roadbed right at that corner. Um, I have seen people go off the roadbed and I've seen the results of it. So even though the roadbed, excuse me, has been widened and we lost property, the entire 250 feet or so that abuts our property, um, we've just seen a continuous a disregard and vehicles leaving the roadbed. So there's all of that. And then of course, um, there's the issue of the stone wall. <laughs> uh, it's been there since the 1800s and it's compromised again by soil that was, <laughs> And they'll be taken away with snow plowing this year and widening of the road and all these different things. So, um, yeah. I know you had told Teresa and I when we visited with you there a few weeks ago. When did you guys purchase the property? Derek signed the papers around December 1st, 2015. Oh, 2015. Okay. And by the end of January 2016, we had a surveyor. Um, hired and I don't know if you completed it by the end of January, but almost immediately we had it surveyed and um, since then we've been dealing with some horrendous groups. Um, but I'm here tonight with the idea of um, and again, it was interesting to listen to him educate with the idea of educating people through town meeting because again, I'm from Wisconsin and while Truce has been great as an ear listening to me, um, it was probably inappropriate. And so whatever the court is starting from tonight, um, I invite anybody to uh, contact me and I'll walk you through what the two of you heard me say. Um, any discussion or Whatever is the follow-up from this evening, I'm open to working with you. Derek, I thought might walk in. He works beyond the time that he could be here. Um, and I did tell Derek, and I'm gonna make the announcement that, um, well, I don't believe that there are any of the things that I'm concerned about that we would be held responsible as far as financing. I'll kickstart the idea with a thousand dollars of my own money because it's that important to us uh, to have consideration and then something to be done. Okay, all right. Sounds good. All right, thank you. Um, I will be part of. Um, I'm going to give you want to that picture around. Uh, uh, I'll get the I need to move it because all of that. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. And there's a four to five copies of this, I think. Yeah. So I left them with Kelly because I didn't want them. Yeah. They're all the same. Okay. okay. So contact trees. Um, you have my phone number. Okay. Again, I'm just not sure how it's going to proceed for me. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, yeah. Sally. Okay. Two questions. Oh, Sally. Oh, Jean has a question. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The first is you had a survey. Yes. 
my question is to what extent that survey matched or was it even possible to match the 1885 survey? Okay, when I said survey, that was our land property. Okay. And the surveyor that we hired did not specifically, to our knowledge, survey the, the road. edge, the abutment of the roadbed. He just sort of took it as what was there now. And so again, the importance of, if you're going to change the roadbed, I think it would be appropriate to start with a resurvey to find out if we're following the original center of the road. And, and and second, yes, uh, you're really asking that the that there be more distance between your home and the road. Um, not the entire two hundred and fifty plus or minus feet. Um, mostly concerning is the corner as you come around the north side of the house. From there, across the property of the neighbor directly across, that is where we've lost most of the land from what was originally laid out. Having said that, the road work that was done in conjunction with the water project, which we were not aware was going to be a part of the water project, which should have just ran down the center of the road, we lost a foot and a half, the entire length of our side of the road. And in addition to that, as I say, okay, so now there's a new edge of the road. You can come up and, and look at what happened since that. The cars have gone off that new edge of the road and we've got another foot that's traveled and we've lost that you know, the, the plant or the growth, the growth of the grass is gone because cars rode up or drove off the road as well as um, the snow plowing, which is part of living in Vermont. However, 250 feet, I mean, the whole thing is. Uh, that's helpful, thank you. That's what I wanted to know. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming tonight, Sally. Yeah. Let me know. Yep. All right. Any other public comment? Yeah. So I'm Cody Dero. I live on Christian Hill. Okay. Um, I spoke with Therese recently, and we have a couple things going on. One of them being posting more speed limit signs on Christian Hill. We happen to live on both sides of Christian Hill. The road goes right through our property. And in the light of posting the signs, we now have to post the legal speed limit, which is now 35 as the town ordinance. And we have people traveling through at 50, 60, maybe 70. I mean, cranking. And I have three little girls. We have the cows, the barn. Um, it's extremely unsafe. And now everybody is posting the new signs being 35 is going to allow, if everyone thinks it's 25 now, um, putting up a couple of signs that now say, well, now it's 10, 5, 10 miles faster. What are we going to get out of that? So Morgan did order those signs and the children at play, I think, right that same day that yeah. he spoke. And I could tell you that we had Jordan's come in and we talked about it because the ordinance is you'd have to change, you know, have to change the ordinance. However, it's not as simple as you would think. The select board can only change the speed limit after we do, we'd have to work with two rivers and we would do a speed study. I'm going to say something to you that's crazy, and I know it's crazy, but it's the law is we say we do a speed study and everybody on your road is going 50. That speed study means that we actually cannot decrease the speed of the road. We could increase it, but we can't decrease it. So it's, 
it's weird. <laughs> you would think that the select board would have the right to say, look, we have a lot of complaints. We're going to set it at 25, but we'd have to do a speed study. And otherwise, you know, it's all part of enforcement. It can't be enforced properly. But we have um, spoken to people, you know, the powers that be before about advocating for this because it's ridiculous. It would seem as though if people were speeding, we should lower the speed limit. But I did get, I think I mentioned that to you. I, I don't know if I've told you or not, but I just got the speed dolly. Yeah. yeah. So I have to program it this week and then, you know, put that out as well. So I'm not saying we can't do a speed study. We certainly can, but, and it would show all it is the counters on the road, you know, the little yeah. tubes that go across, yeah. but, you I know. People are traveling the speed limit or, or what we all thought was the speed limit. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah. There's probably 10%. And the biggest concern is if Oscar comes up that he can't really write some ticket if the speed limit isn't posted correctly. Well, it, it, yeah. I mean, isn't it posted at 35 now? I mean, no, it's posted at 25 that happened. That's not right. But anyways, it's, so it'll be posted at 35, but Oscar can still write him a ticket because he knows what the ordinance says. And I did email him and Justin Cram, yeah. the other ones, and asked for some targeted enforcement and talked about a specific location that needed to be looked into um, for our discussion as well. So is there like a certain time of day or day of the week that seems like speed's more prevalent? That Because the only reason why I say that is being that we have kind of limited resources with the constable, right. I'd hate to waste the constable's time or not get that targeted enforcement like if you said it's mostly like late afternoon early evening maybe people are coming home or something they're zipping through there and then we can see if we can target that time it's actually almost nobody that lives on christian Hill. i mean i know almost everybody and it's it's not yeah. our residents it's it's people coming through but it's it's also kids um we have a lot of kids that come through and they're up there um Things they yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and there's a pull off right after the house too that I've now dropped uh, logs there because that was being used as um, a spot for things that shouldn't be going on. Yeah. And you have Oscar's number, right? You said I do. You, so yeah. I okay. Had Oscar's come up to visit and talk about us a different issue. And while he was just sitting there visiting, I mean, the first car coming through pulled him over. Mm. And I don't believe that was a resident. So, so I, I just want to make sure I got it right. So first part is, even though we may not have the right signs, he still can enforce the Yeah, speed because there. he would enforce it at 35 because he knows what the ordinance is. But we're in the process of making sure that the signage is yeah. correct. Morgan okay. ordered some after Justin came in. Morgan got the catalog, came mm -hmm. back, and had Kelly order signs, then, as well as children at play signs. And Justin does do something very smart, which is he puts cones in the road when his children are out, like riding bikes and things like that, which I think is uh -huh. a really smart move. Um so yeah, when when that. are we thinking um, that the constables will have some time to do some targeting? I have no idea. I sent them an email and just asked them to do some targeted enforcement. And I knew Oscar knew Justin. And because yeah. I'm just wondering, like, if we, I mean, we meet every two weeks. Yeah. So depending on when we catch this thing and and yeah. go forward, like, would it make you know if I we're able to do some targeted enforcement over the next week? Yeah, I can ask. Like, him. maybe we could get a follow up from. It, it, you don't have to necessarily come to the meeting, but you could you could follow up with Therese and say, yeah. hey, I've seen it better or worse or same. Yeah. 35 yeah. or yeah. but 60, 70, uh, um, even slamming on the brakes, there there's no hope for anybody in that. Yeah. yeah. And Absolutely. I mean, it's we're very active at the property. I've been there for now six years, bought it a year and a half ago. Um, but you know, having a four wheeler or just crossing the road with a tractor. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm afraid that something serious is really going to happen. Yeah. Which has brought me here and into the town. Sure. Yeah. Another about. thing I could think of is I'm not sure what the road would look like is um, installing what, you know, we, I just bought two more solar line, sun, solar flashing speed signs for the downtown. They're not cheap, but 
problem with those is sometimes they're not a deterrent. Sometimes people just want to see how fast they can go. Yeah. It, it's really sometimes it's frustrating, but certainly we talked about it, getting the dolly right. going and then maybe putting it, you know, near your place because you guys are back and forth around. You can keep an eye on it. But um, but I did speak to Oscar, but I'll get a hold of Oscar because I emailed him and Justin Cram. He's the other constable and said, you know, we need to do some targeting enforcement. So let me find out when he's going to be around and see, you know, what about, so, you know, what does he have for ideas of other things that we could do? Up there? Yeah, towards the evening, I think there's a lot, a lot of it, but, you know, that's when I'm there. I think Sam's there and she sees a lot too. And, um, you know, we speak to people. The other thing I will tell you is, if you get a plate number, like if you can say it's either a car and a plate number, a truck and a plate number, if you can give that to Oscar, he will write them a ticket on your say so. Means that if they don't pay it, you may have to go to court to say that they were speeding. But I've done that before. And, um, and yeah, it's just incredibly. I mean, I was laying in bed last night and I, you know, you can tell and I can hear. I mean, it's gone. And uh -huh. It's, Crazy. And scary, yeah. So let me, I'll talk to Oscar and, but yeah, if you, by any chance, if you, um, your wife ever see a, you know, if you can get a plate number, then he can issue a ticket. And if the person fights it, you just have to go to court. You don't have any problem standing up there and saying you were doing this, but that's, um, yeah. And maybe with him being there, even if it was occasionally once a week or just for half hour, an hour, it's enough for somebody to be like, well, I'm not going to, I mean, what, after the double the speed limit, that's arrestable so yeah so let me so, yeah, and right unfortunately now. that's a majority of the speeding issues that we do see in town are not necessarily in the village area yeah. you'd be surprised exactly. at how fast some of the people go on the village area yeah but i mean when you get Airborne. to when people get to the dirt roads they just assume that yeah it's Can't open country like right yeah oh, all massachusetts yeah place, so but it's but yeah so I, all right why, why don't we just figure out a time work with the constables to find out a time yeah. that we can do some targeting mm -hmm. patrols and then maybe give us some feedback on how that's going. Are you okay with them sitting in your driveway? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, there's better spots than that. Yeah. <laughs> Oscar knows I showed him a couple like right pulling into the barn. Yeah. There's another that has the trees covering and pull through that goes out to the field. Okay. There's a ton of great spots. All right. Well, what I'll do is my email and, you know, and reach out to him as far as out. Oscar and Justin, let them know that, hey, you know, you swing in and someone's home they'll tell you you know that would place a lot of park. but like, you're yeah, right so maybe if we just target it and, and if i can get one of them there say, once a week then maybe we'll get people to slow oh yeah he's the same thing at his house and it's yeah, yeah. no dave's saying the same it's the, the yeah. and, okay i mean and that's, yeah. is less important but the kids is absolutely no, I would totally but we'll agree. definitely make that a top yeah. priority on yeah. for the constables to target yeah for that one Get a hold of him and then uh, tonight. I looked down, I pulled out, truck right on my ass. Yeah. So he was going a lot more than 35 when he came up that hill because I could see down 700 feet. He wasn't there. Yeah. Oh, I, I know. I When we had the spring flooding in 2019, I was doing some work um, uh, on the, the hill stretch from St. Andrews Road up, you know, going up. And there was a lady that, I mean, we were down to, you know, my truck, you, you could see quite a ways on that hill. My truck was sitting there with, with the yellow light on and she went by in this like sports car doing, had been 60, like just didn't even pump the brakes. Yeah. Like just yeah. right by me. Like I wasn't exactly. even there. With I know. Yeah. Go. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it was flying. All right. And uh, so I'll get a hold of, uh, track Oscar down tomorrow. Sometimes it takes me a day or so to get a hold yeah. of him because he works full time for the Royalty PD, yeah. as you know. I Let me do that. And then I'm going to get the Dolly program too. So we'll put that on. We were going to start with it downtown, but we'll start with it on Christian. Can, in this case, can um, Oscar or Justin, when they do some patrols, targeting patrols up there, if they can they send us the activity reports up there? I don't, the yeah, I think up? so. I can ask them. <laughs> ask yeah he's, he's tracking that. yeah the whole the whole speed study stuff is weird i mean it is completely the opposite of what you think it it's cause, would be because it's illogical a couple of years ago we i was just gonna bring a couple of years ago we were um <laughs> we were thinking about lowering the speed limit in the village to 20 so we had them come in and professionally you know uh do your speed do study. the speed study and they found that a majority of the people going through the village was exactly what we thought they were doing 
30 miles per hour, yeah. right? So you would think that's okay, you can raise it, but then they're like, no, that means that yeah. you know that's the flow of the traffic. Or like, that doesn't make any sense. It does. So it's, 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 it, yeah, it makes ridiculous. no sense at all. So you would think the select board would have yeah. the power to change it, but like I said, it's one of those very illogical things. The other thing you know you can do is you can write yeah, to we still have to do the speed study mm -hmm. so but you, what you can do however and i would encourage you to do is to send um kirk white and dick mccormick you know send an email kirk is always really good about getting back to people and just saying you know what you know what can you do here about that because it needs to be a legislative change and i have been complaining about this for easily 10 years was far too much I mean, yeah. it's all loose gravel. It's oh yeah, and and some of those corners, the road's barely big enough for both vehicles, and everyone yeah. drives the middle of it. And yeah, at thirty five, it's yeah. still too much. I've always find that interesting on the dirt roads. Whenever I'm driving on the dirt roads, I always look to see how fast I'm going, and I'm usually like twenty five to thirty. And then you look at the speed limit, and you're like, I don't even know how it could even get up to that speed. You yeah. know, it doesn't even make any sense a lot of times with yeah. with the hidden corners and yeah. I know. I'll also reach out to Rita at Two Rivers just to see if she has any ideas and things she's seen in other towns. Two Rivers, you know, works with I think they have 20, 30 towns. How many towns does Two Rivers have? I can't remember how many. 20 something, towns, I think. 27. Yeah. So reach out to Rita too and see if she has any ideas and you know, maybe something she's seen that works somewhere else. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, we can also look at the standards to see what else we can do for its signage. The problem is people get basically blind the by rock. They just don't read the signage anymore. There's so many people that are yeah. just yeah. GPS that they don't even register the signs. We should probably sign your street. Yeah, no, I mean, you're right. But I think yeah. the presence up there, I think, I think it's a heavily used cut through. Yeah. Because I'm like, well, who's this person? And yeah. at a certain point of going down Christian Hill, so there's no reason to go down Christian Hill unless you're right living here. Exactly. exactly. So at that point, yeah. there's a lot of drinking and um, drugs. I think so. Traveling yeah. through. Well, it sounds like maybe. Yeah. Evening or later yeah. part of the day would be yeah, better. And the future. good thing is Justin's talked to us. Okay. So, but I'll also reach out to Rita and see maybe she's seen something that really works and other towns have tried that I just that I don't know. So let's just we'll so look I'll, at it and see what we can do. I'll just write here that you'll Teresa will follow up with yeah. the board at the next. Yeah, meeting. that's awesome. Okay. Yep, and we'll see what we can't do. But yes, again, if you get a plate number, let me know or Oscar and I know they're probably going too fast. But if you happen to, you know then he, he'll he write a ticket on your say-so. Sounds good. Well, thank right. you for bringing that. All right. Yeah, thanks, 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 Justin. I appreciate your patience. So he did order the signs, especially the children at play sign or whatever the wording was specifically. So, all right. And then, so yeah, maybe we'll install that dolly up there. You'll be the first to see how it works. Make sure they don't steal it on us. Yeah, well, no, we'll chain it. When, uh, <laughs> when the uh, Bethel for All was doing the walks one time, uh, one of us had a speed gun mm -hmm. when we were down by the school. Yeah. And so it's amazing if we pointed that at a car to see how quickly they slowed down. Yeah. It's true. A blow dryer works too. Where a blow dryer. Where did she get them? Do you remember? I have no I idea. I have no idea. We actually, yeah. we still have one of them at the Arnold block. Um, AARP left it and we've tried to give it back so many times. Um, I don't think it currently works. It may just be a dead battery, but can't hurt to just stand outside holding it. <laughs> Can you drop it off at the town office? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Yeah. I'll, be, I'll, get I'll it. be back in town next week so I can do it next week. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I'll get it to you. Well, you know, yeah. So, so we still have them kicking around. Why not? But yeah, anyways, so we'll do everything we can. We'll talk to Oscar. I can, I'll talk to Rita, we'll get your signs. We'll try that and see what we can do. And, but I do think the cones are a really good idea. Yeah, we see another two and put bodies in the road and yeah. <laughs> make it. I, I feel like at this point, it's pretty well known that, yeah. and there, you know, there's a lot of people that we have talked to and they slow down. I've had people apologize. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. There's still a couple that I I've tried to catch up with to yeah. have a conversation, and mm -hmm. they were going fast, and I couldn't catch up. To them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
So, all right. So we will try to work on it. I'll try to look at it here from a couple different angles and see what we can do. Yeah, well, thanks for coming in. Yep. And uh, we appreciate it. Have a good evening. Yes. All right, you too. We'll talk to Rita and see what she knows. Okay, any further public comment? Owen, do you have anything else before I go to the Zoom? Zoom? Um, just North Main Street is also bad. Yeah, <laughs> I think Speeding? you already know that, but now yeah. that I live on. Yeah, you're actually getting a new um, flashing light. I just they're on yeah. order. They should be, hopefully, they're in this week. So it's one's wild. going up there by the metal source. I know. Especially. A flash, like by um, a flashing speed sign, like it is by Mascoma. There's one going up here, and then there's going to be another one placed headed towards the school on um, Dennis Wood, you know, Valley mm -hmm. Motorside, where it used to be one. So yeah, I would just I would just tell Oscar and Justin to turn them loose and write tickets until they're out of pads. I sent them emails. So send I send notice to people that were out there, pull yeah. people over. So it's, um, it's usually, you know, I get home from the bar after cleaning and stuff around 1.30, between 1.30 and 2.30 in the morning. And that's when we have people driving. Oh, I'm sure. So fast between the hours of two and four in the morning. It's yeah, because they, you know, like they're going 60 from, it's usually people going north, not people coming south. Yeah. Um, and they're just going down Main Street that fast. Sure, and because nobody's, you know, yeah, they know VSP, nobody's on duty. But Richard uh, Manning said the same thing. He was at the River Street pump station like 1 30 in the morning because he had an alarm and he's like and he was telling well, me i hear him wait by my house too they were going he's like at 1 30 and he said there's a lot of traffic out at 1 in the morning so but no so you are getting a a sign so that will you know just like it does by um the bank the drive-through it will you know flash when people to show them their speed so yeah, so it was a thursday afternoon royalton pd was parked across from valley motors in that empty lot and I was at S and S Auto. It wasn't Oscar; it was somebody else. Oh, good. I turned around. He's got some out of stater, and I'm talking with a friend of mine. I turned around. That car's gone. He's got. I mean, within ten minutes, he had three people. So pulled there's up. a lot of speed on Pleasant Street. Yes, absolutely. I can hear him coming. You know, half a mile away before they get to my house. Mm -hmm. so go around that corner at. I don't know. I mean, Paul testified that they go around the corner at. 60 plus. Mm -hmm. It's not so. I, I want to thank the road crew for grading under the bridge, the railroad bridge up by my house. Oh, good. But I will tell you that now that it's graded, people will drive faster. <laughs> that's, that's life. That's the way it goes. You can't have it. Sh you shouldn't have complained about mud season, right? <laughs> they were going slow at mud season. That's right. Cars that come through this lane are or... oh, anyway. from right. Yeah. Yes, I know. <clears throat> and down that hill. You need like a pace car. Anything, uh, Paul or Lenny? Do you guys have anything in the on the Zoom call? You guys, it looks like everybody looks they're good. Okay. okay. Yeah, we're good. I'm good. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I'm good. Right. Okay. So we have uh, let's see three appointments for the town meeting committee. So we have Lisa, Karen, and Lily. So unless uh, any, anybody has any anything else on that, I just need a motion to appoint those three to the town meeting committee. So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. All right. Lily knows that this is a for life commitment <laughs> one way in one way out i was gonna say i'm surprised you guys didn't bet that final one yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right and set the public hearing date for the zoning bylaw amendments to june 12th 2023 at some spot i talked to um uh, Kevin Geiger at Two Rivers just to make sure that any legislation that had passed like now is the time we just did all this work mm -hmm. so if there was any legislation that passed I wanted to make the changes while you guys had it mm -hmm. and he said that there was nothing he felt that we were out of the six things that he had um, that, it, that they did he felt we were good on five of the six but the sixth one that law hadn't passed yet so he was 
kind of waiting. And it seemed like he thought it was didn't make sense that law. He was hoping it got changed before they yeah. passed it. But so I'm not sure if this will have any changes, but as I just wanted to be sure, because if, you know, there was talk about saying that someone had to build a duplex and you couldn't build a single family home if you're on water. So I wanted to make sure our zoning bylaws were mm -hmm. after all the work we've done. I did not want them to pass and then be changed. Cha oh, I was yeah. going to be ugly. So it, I wanted that's, to but that's the way it works all the time. Anyway. I didn't know, but I was like, just as soon as you do a month later, they're going to change it anyway. I know. So I was like, no way, man, I'm being proactive. So Kevin felt we were good. And, mm. And um, at that point, he was going to let me know. So okay. hopefully, but yeah, so you have a, there's a warning notice and how long it has to be in the paper and this and that. So that's how we came up with uh, June 12th. June 12th. Okay. Any and the planning commission will be here. Some of the members to help if you have any questions. Any further discussion on that or just need a motion to approve the public hearing date for the zoning bylaw amendments to June 12th? 2023 at six o'clock. So moved. Okay, all in favor? All right. All right. All right. And last, uh, just kind of following up last time we talked about the Vermont Criminal Justice um, Training Council and impartial policy policing. Fair and impartial policy. It's valuable. And we had um we had all looked at that last time. Yep. And Oscar looked at it and then I added you wanted those references back in that I took out. So I put them back in. And um didn't want really to change anything, just some wording. But and uh talked to Oscar, he was fine with it. And like we said, it comes out of the criminal justice training council. So the next one we either have to do is like body cameras. Um, I think we have three more to do. Um, and I didn't else. have, well, one of them's cameras, one of them is, um, uh, excessive force. Well, they know and they're all kind of given to you by state law anyways, but, um, I didn't have a chance to finish reviewing the one that I had started work on. Okay. So we'll hopefully next, well, maybe not next time. I'm not sure. It'd be the next meeting or earlier, the first one in June, we'll get to that. Did we have any further discussion on that or any amendments over the last two weeks or three weeks? Oh, yeah, we need right, to yeah, no, three weeks. Yeah. Okay, if not, just need a motion to adopt. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Yeah, EV charging station needs in Vermont and downtown improvement plans. So we get this email, um, uh, Nicole had forwarded it to me and then I put it out on Front Porch Forum too because obviously they're looking for, you know, businesses and other locations. So it made me think about it as far as um, <clears throat> obviously better connections had talked about EV charging stations. So I talked to Rita about it the other day and I got a copy, uh, Chris Sargent gave me a copy of the plan, uh, gave me two copies. So mm -hmm. I think this is going to be a winter project for us is we need to go through the Better Connections plan, the recommendations that were made for the downtown and decide what we actually want to do. Like it, it seems pretty clear that the majority of the select board does not want to build the second section of parking because it's so ledgy and you know so we have to kind of narrow down what we're going to do obviously to do anything you're pretty much going to have to eliminate parking on one side of main street um just to deal with you know traffic and um updating sidewalks so the interesting thing is that rita told me is the bike ped grant program usually has about three million dollars total to fund all their projects last year i think it was last year royalton was given a million dollars because they really hit all the criteria and i think that bethel could do that as well we've been through the bethel for all you know process um so i really feel like that could open up you know maybe a bigger picture of funding for us so what we need to do is scope the project because i can write the transportation alternatives grant um, they're usually due in June, so not this year, but maybe next year, because it's I don't haven't received confirmation yet from Jesse Devlin at the state, but um, it could be about eight years until the state paves Main Street. So that means we have about eight years to get to get our project done. 
the transportation alternative grants are usually three to five years and you know they could go longer and we also my guess is to do this we would end up needing to get more than one source of funding so it's going to be a package to put together but um the first thing we need to do is go through the um all the great information that dubois and king gave us and figure out what does the select board really want to do here what parts of it do you want to do? And then we can work towards, once we get that, then we'll have a scope of project. We'll be able to get, you know, pricing and go through, but it's it's not, you know, it's going to take us a few meetings to figure out the scope of work and then um, apply for the transportation alternatives grant. And then, like I said, and I guarantee you, I'm going to have to try to find money somewhere else to fund it. But if we know we have about eight years, then we have a little bit of time to figure it out because obviously it doesn't make sense to, you know, repave and then do the sidewalk. So we need to get it done before the state comes through. Mm. So I haven't received the confirmation yet from Jesse Dublin. I reached out to Joel. He's a Jesse. So it would be nice to figure out, you know, exactly what the select board wants to do. So I think it's a the EV charging station is to me, it's, that's going to be part of it is part of this bigger project and part of the transportation alternatives is where are we gonna put them? Um, the other thing is we know we need to redo the municipal parking lot. So if that's where you chose to put in a, um, you know, a charging station, what kind? There's different kinds and, you know, where do you wanna put it and that sort of thing too. Cause obviously we need to redo this. There's some stormwater that needs to happen. So that would be a stormwater grant. That was one of the projects that Dubois and King scoped for us in that portion of Bethel for All that was for stormwater. So we know we're gonna do redo this, you know, tear up some of this parking lot to install under drain and possibly we install the proper stuff for a you know charging station, but it could be all part of the package. So to me, it doesn't make sense to put a charging station in now when <clears throat> we don't have the infrastructure. And if GMP gets this 19 million, we may be able to partner with them. Maybe some of that 19 million can go towards the, you know, some of the power underground or how are we going to get this charging station to work? So it's going to be a few pieces and I would assume at least two or three pots of money. To put I together. enjoy this is a dream. No, I'm, this is no dream. This is, this is a reality, dude. We got it, but well, we have to decide, but the scope of the project will you know that, that part it's not a dream but right to get I, four or five people to yeah throw I know money when, into the pot i think i know when we um yeah i mean i've done it before i've done downtown projects and we've had multiple funding sources and it, it's a nightmare <laughs> um funding sources because this one will pay for this and this one won't but it it can work and um but i think with gm you know like i said if gmp gets the 19 million and chris and i were denied by <laughs> peter welch for our money for camp brook but maybe they would be willing to do a congressional earmark for a downtown you know you never know i know through our exercise that we did three three to four years ago and because the energy committee was looking at Putting a um, a charging station in. Yeah, about. Four I know the things ago, yeah. that came out of that was the only the only charging station that we sort of could afford was the level one two pieces because the grant was pretty was within like a thousand dollars of the total cost. Mm -hmm. Obviously, after that, then you take on ownership of that. But we had we had established at the end we pulled the plug on it because at that point. We didn't feel that a level one or two charger would meet the needs of a person in town because right. you've got to plug it in for mm -hmm. six or eight hours to get your charge. And we'll call it at the time, the level three superchargers were, uh, I'm probably going to completely get this wrong, but they were like $20,000, oh, yes. right? Were really and the grant would only cover like four or five. So yeah. we were going to have to make a significant investment. Plus at that time, there was the plans for the interstate park and ride. So there was yeah. talking about all these charging we didn't know level one, two, three, what they were going to be. That's a um, joke. Yeah. So <laughs> I've never seen anybody plugged in. Them. Mm -hmm. So at least that the only things I just, because I don't know how many were on the board before. And I know Paul was, but he's, he's off now, but the, um, is what came out of that anyways, was that we determined that a level one or two didn't really, wasn't, it was just going to be a waste of money. It was going to be a, we're going to invest in it, take mm -hmm. ownership, and it was going to sit there not yeah. being used, right? Because we were going to do it there. Yeah. So um, I think if we're going to do it. And how they were going to pay. Yeah. It. So, it, so it, 
the level three supercharger is kind of the way to go. But then we also started to talk about the tail end of that, about partnering with a, a small business like Champlain Farms or, or McCullough's that would have, you know, a proper, we'll call it facility. And then we didn't have to take up municipal parking and that is so does. dear to us. Yeah. So that's kind of where we left off of yeah. that. And I, I know you came in right on the tail end of that. Part of that was um, the discussion was we didn't know how were people going to pay for it? Why would the town pay for it? Of- and then it was the warranty was like, what happens when it breaks? Who's, you know, what was the whole responsibility of it? But this thing that we did put in the packet, Dave, does like mm-hmm. McCullough's could partner with the state if they want to put in a charging station. Right, but there, there's some information that I would garner if I was a business. You got, you got, uh, what's a, what's that uh, place in Norwich? The big Dan and Wits. Uh-huh. They've got two Dan and Wits in Norwich. Oh, okay. they have two of those <laughs> level three. Okay. Uh, the new convenience store Randolph Center's got two of those. Yeah, Rinkers. Yeah, or was Rinkers. The barn. Yeah. Um, where else? There, this has happened, mm-hmm. but I have never seen anybody plugged in a Dan and Wits, and I've only seen one person plugged in up to uh, Rinkers. Oh, uh, maybe plugged, it's a different time of day. I've plugged in several times up on How the, fast? How long do you have to sit there, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I go from 20% to 80% in 45, 50 minutes. On, okay. two. on a level three. Mm-hmm. I mean, or That's supercharger. The supercharger. Yeah. Up at the mobile station, and I've had other seen other people mm-hmm. there at the same time. Okay. I guess I'm and just saying, I right. go by and and yeah. I, and I know some of the well, I wouldn't say some, I know a lot of the thought and reasons behind us putting one in town was to have a dot on the map, which exactly. connect the dots and it helps with tourism to come in, you know, because if they're coming up the interstate and they say, Oh, the, the rest area is all level one, but. Bethel has a level level three, you know, then there's opportunity for some the tourism. Rest area is level one, but you have to have your own charge. I, I, I've never even seen anybody ever plug in those. Well, that's because you have to have your own Four? 110 cord and charger. It's oh. just a 110 outlet at every street light. I mean, that's <laughs> what would be, what would probably be nice because it has been a few years since we've talked about it is maybe we could task the energy committee with getting us the information for a level three charger you know what's the cost what can we get for grants to offset the cost and then what is the user be. cost versus the problem of charging Bethel, Bethel, we don't have enough parking anyway yeah so when when you get into those grants mm. you have to leave that space empty yeah oh yeah mm-hmm. so you, when you not only do yeah. you uh have the uh, the cost but now you've lost two or four apartments. Usually it's four. You got to have room for four. Gone unless yeah. it's an electric well, car. Well, the, th- the other thing I'm, I'm thinking too, Dave, is you know, and and this is where we left off with it was, what if we invested money, but it was on a private lot? So, for instance, you know, if we were going to have a level three charger, and let's say we were going to have to invest ten thousand dollars into it, right? And now that ten thousand dollars, we're going to have to manage that facility, which I, that was a big thing: is how do we manage it, right? Mm-hmm. Who manages it? And how do they pay for and it? And it takes away it. parking, but but maybe we can motivate a small business owner that may not have the cash or want to fund the whole job. Maybe we could partner with them, get our dot on the map, but we walk away from it, right? We. You know, we we sure there's, there's we maybe became possibilities. Maybe we we fund a part of it so that they can fund it, and then they become the managers of you know what I mean. And then it's not on municipal parking. You know, we kind of win win. We get our dot in the map that that tourists or or locals can use that. But at the same time, now Teresa yeah. doesn't have to manage the thing or plow yeah. around it in the winter time or yeah or. You know, when we looked at the Bethel for all, the first place that they had them was on that small sliver of land we own between Babes and um, yeah. the um, hardware store. Mm-hmm. But I actually don't think that we should charge the energy committee with looking into it right now because we're not prepared for it. It'll be part of this bigger plan as to do it. I put this information out front for Torm. So if uh, Dan McCullough or whatever babes or anybody else wanted to apply you know the they could but for us even if we know the cost right now 
it's, we don't have the infrastructure. We're going to have to tear out the parking lot and some other things. I just wonder if, I mean, I know the only reason I say that too is because Nicole is so stressed out because she lost another member. Um, that, you know, we certainly will need to look at it, but I think you're right. And who knows, maybe in three years, there's like a level four. What did you say the highest level was right now? Three? three that I know. Maybe there's like a, you know, something new that comes out, but, but yeah, I did put this information out. So people like Dan McCullough, Champlain Farms, you know, places like that, that might but I think to a small one could. At no fault of their own. I think, you know, Champlain Farms or, or McCullough coming. would need a nudge, you know, to yeah. do it. I don't think they're going to just sign yeah. up and do it. But I think if like we became some sort of partner. Yeah. Maybe GW. Um, yeah. Oh, GW. Or a little a good idea. You know, if we if we like initially. Yeah. Yeah. She's right. If we initially funded something. Yeah. Or help towards it. And then we were able to walk here. away from it. Because there is money in this this thing. I looked at all the links and there is money. Mm -hmm. So somebody can get grant money. But she's right. GW has that whole parking lot. Nalada. Nalada. GW Nalada. It's me. GW to us for everyone. So um, you're you right. Bad walk to the downtown. Yeah. Hi, Paul. Hang on. The dog is. <laughs> Originally, back in the day, we also talked about putting one in up at the White Church, the end spots at the White Church. Uh, taking up two spots because you have to also have it handicap accessible. And that was a nice flat area. And it was thought about putting them right in there. Uh, that could put our dot on the map and not interfere with municipal parking in downtown at all. No, that's a good idea. Yep, yeah, that's right, Paul. You also have that little point <clears throat> nine acres that's in front of Lacey's trailer. Yeah. You know, right I was there. I was thinking of three places yeah. that are not the, the parking lot. Yeah. One is down by the hardware store yeah. that you mentioned. Another one's at the yeah. White Church that he just mentioned. And the third was that little strip of land. Yeah. This I mean, I really, I really right by think the bridge. We did talk about it during Bethlehem. And I said no to the ones by the Mills hardware just because of snow removal and, and um, they have a dumpster down there. And I just thought it would be difficult. But, but, but you're right. If I'd like to see a business do it. I, I mean, it wouldn't cost much to change that green space no. in front of places, you know, to parking lot there. And no. I, I think you may not see it used as much during the week, but the weekends definitely it would get used. Um, but that that would be cheap money. I mean, it would I cost a lot to do that. Data, like how often they're. So I'm saying you got that place up there, man, up center, and you got Dan and Wits. There's, and I know well, I was just saying, just yeah. parking. Yeah, no, what did oh, they do? Parking. parking. We could always yeah. add the charging station later, but like I at least used. Yeah. Put some parking yeah. there. That's interesting. And if it's, if, if it's you used put some diagonal parking, you probably get like six parking it's used spots three times a day. That's right. Yeah. And that could be part of the plan. So that's interesting. Yeah. Cause I'm curious about that. And that, I have, I'm curious about like, you know, how people pay, do they swipe their credit card? Like, it's like going to a gas pump. And I don't understand it either. I'm an yeah. electrician. That's <laughs> okay. That's right. That's your career. They've had two, <laughs> two 100 amp chargers. That's what it's a 400 amp server. Uh-huh. Does your math work different? No, I, I don't know. I'm waiting for you to tell me what's going but it, on. Well, one, well, go from 200 amp to but as far as service, it, you go eight times as much money. Yeah. The installation up there, I would, I would not get, I would not be surprised. That was $25,000 to put that installation in. Oh, I'm sure. Oh. I'm sure. Well, I mean, I know it was because the prices that we had gotten to, you know, yeah. was quite a bit for the level three to the point where we were like, okay, that. Can't afford pull, that one. So, pull, let's go to one or two. So the Walmart and West Lever always. Yeah. Of course, you go in there shopping for four hours. So yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. You come out, you got a full charge. But yeah. But part part of your question is yes, you use your credit card, uh -huh. or you know, you have an account with that company that yep. does that. Do what they I don't by the hour. How does it? By the kilowatt hour. By the kilowatt. Okay, I was just curious. I didn't. Uh, know and interesting. the uh, and I don't know how much of a cut the the oh, owner yeah. of the property gets. Right. right. Oh, interesting. But I, my like guess that. is that they're getting something. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. They just must like be getting a percentage. Yeah. yeah just like. Yeah. So Lisa they pay. Like, yeah. They're paying. They're providing fuel. Yeah. For 
gasoline powered vehicles, diesel powered vehicles, yeah. and electric powered yeah. vehicles. Well, next time I'm up there, I'm gonna I'll ask them what they get for their cut up there. Just tell them yeah, I mean, it's, it's so, down. let's cut. Yeah, you're up there. You got 45 minutes to kill you. <laughs> not, in, not anymore. <laughs> to be able to design the whole thing, but yeah, it's my house now. But <laughs> but uh, no, I. But I. That's yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So. Anyway, so it just seems like it's going to be for us, it would. So certainly, yes, I put this on front porch form in case with people that were interested. And uh, but for us, you know, what, I think what we'll focus on, I think we need to focus on is what what does the select board want the scope of the project to be? And, you know, parking on one side of the street. I think if you're going to do that, I also think you should implement um you know, like three hour parking on Main Street so that, you know, you don't have people cool parking in front of their business all day. And, you know, but just on Main Street, you know, that way people have, um, you know, or maybe it's only certain during certain hours, maybe it's only like 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. or something like that. So, um, so that people aren't, you know, just parking there and going home, mm. you know, for and taking up a downtown parking spot. So there's a few things to think about, obviously, but looking at the Bethel for all will give us some if they have guidance that, and some funding. That so. Underground tunnel, they can put one down to Ultramotive and you can walk under the tracks and pump shop. That's a, well, there is one. I thought, I think they buried it. No, someone told, uh, Farron Griffin told me that he sent me a picture of it and he was, I'm like, don't even think about going well, to the that access. Place. I think you can see the access down below. Yeah. That right beside Bay Bar, the, yeah. where that little house was, there's no access there. Not on that yeah. side, but on the other side there is. Yeah, I don't know. It's pretty interesting. But he was like, oh, would the town be? I'm like, no, 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 no. Town's not doing nothing with that. And I think it might be railroad anyways, but yeah, he he sent me a picture of it one day when he saw the backside. But I'm like, I'm like, I, you know, we gotta pay for other stuff. Why we're not refurbishing a tunnel? <laughs> but uh, but it was interesting when he sent the the picture of it. So so, so it sounds like Teresa, that you want us to have a continuing discussion. Yeah, about the downtown. I'll get you. And the maybe we could plan on at the next board meetings starting to go through the recommendations or options yeah, maybe, and yeah. see what what we want to do or not do at least you know, yeah get the ball moving and it'll be either the, the direction next, on that. It, i don't know if it'll be monday i'll have to look at the schedule either well yeah it might not be this I might, might be the ball. yeah we're back okay. to back so but anyways yeah i'm going to photocopy those pages of the report so that everybody can see what the mm. you know and it also ties in with the stormwater design because there's one for here there's one for across the street there's a right. sediment separator so obviously if we're tearing up to do um stormwater mitigation, then again, it all makes sense to do it before the state comes through and paves. Mm -hmm. But um, speaking about that, I may have hit pay dirt and may actually have a meeting. Found gold? Well, oh. I might just get the wall fixed behind the fish. Um, I have a, finally, it only took three years, but I have a meeting with um, Jesse Devlin and he said like three or four people from the state. I'm like, eh, more the merrier. I told him to come to town office and he was going to, he's setting up an appointment time. I said, whatever works for you, I will make it work. So they're going to come park at the town office and go down and scope mm -hmm. it out. And I'm like, look, <clears throat> that is not my place to say whether that thing is structurally sound or not. That's your job. You're the state. But what I want is maintenance. And if you have to take the top off and re-pour it and do some maintenance so it doesn't A, look like hell and B, chunks of it aren't falling off into the road mm -hmm. so i think once he realized he's like so you're just looking for repair and maintenance like, yeah i said yeah i'm not looking for you to tear if it's structurally down. safe and yeah. which they claim it is and you're just doing um like type one repair on it it will prolong the life of that yeah. you know they, i mean they should be doing it yeah because they and haven't. fixing the rail that that exactly. whole that whole top rail needs to be it Totally. Something that's good. what I said. It's cut so it the that, top and that, pour the top. Yeah. It's dangerous up there. And then and it's fix any of the facing and... that's going on. Exactly. So and put I'll, our fish back up. I'll let you know when I get the I'm not sure they'll put the fish back up. But so, I will let you know when I get um I'll let you know, Chris, when I have the meeting. So in case you're around, you can come listen to them. I don't have any uh, I agree with you that taking an overall <laughs> look at the whole yeah. thing is, is important. The other but I just I do want to say that it was put together in a way that it could be done piecemeal. Mm -hmm. So that 
um, if we were to say yes, we we need to look more seriously at we lost a, mm -hmm. at, at the EV station. We don't have to wait <laughs> till the whole thing. We've decided what pieces we're going to do. So you're. I'm the saying wall? each. No, no, no. I'm going. Oh, back. I, we were talking about the wall. I'm like, I'm the sorry. wall was done no, in no, sections. No, I was no, like, no, no. oh, I didn't no, know that. I'm, go <laughs> I'm going <laughs> back to the EV. Oh, see, I'm sorry. Okay, you switched yeah, As sorry. part of the Bethel for All. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Program. Mm -hmm. Yes, let's look at the whole thing. Right. And decide which we're going to do. Absolutely. But if. You're I saying just, you'd like to see the EV charger sooner rather than later. I'm saying I, would, I don't want to preclude that possibility. Yeah, no, I don't okay. have a problem with that. Yeah, no, I'm not saying that either. I'm just saying that depending on the location and stuff as part of the project, it may just be that. So what is happening from Paul Valley? No, we Both lost sound and video. Yep. We what happened to you? Did you guys get? I don't know. Orca. Yeah, ours is fine. Yeah. So you're just going to say that. Yeah. It's working on our end. I don't know. On it. We're still connected, but he's reconnecting. Buffering, buffering. I don't know why. You didn't pay our bill. Yeah. Yep. You're done. All right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could unmute ours until he gets his back on. We could just do it through the computer here. Can you hear us, Lindley? Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we're what? doing it through our laptop until Orca gets reconnected. So we'll keep, so, keep hammer down here. Yeah, so yep. anyway, so yeah, that's, so we will okay. look at the. So we'll keep that as yeah, a. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, I've got to do it for, I'm making no, uh, copies. All right, and town manager's report, is there anything left in there? Um, this, oh, okay, so the temporary bridge is up. Um, we were the mobile thing. I told you that Christian Hill starting next week. Um, so uh, the delinquent, uh, the shutoff notices, 24-hour shutoff notices went today. So if you received any phone calls, um, we did the delinquent notices went out, and um, we had. Um, so we hung the 24-hour shutoff notices. So obviously we've seen quite a few people today and heard from them, and either made payment arrangements, thanks Owen, or got their money. Um, Jason Booth will be here next week. Yep. Yeah. Jason Booth will be here next week um, to uh, for awarding the project. Um, it looks like uh, Hebert was the original, uh, was the low bidder. They were waiting on some information from them, but that's most likely who will be awarding the contract to. Um, the other thing is, it's that time of year again when we need to do. Uh, I do evaluations of the employees, which means you do my evaluation. And I put a little note in here because we need well, to. We talk don't do about the evaluation it. yet. No, well, you do it for. Um, you Set do it those. in May, mm -mm. in June. Yes, because a raise takes effect in July. That's when you did it yeah. last year. Uh, no. I'm we do your evaluation at the end of the year. We do a goal setting. Fiscal now. year. We don't. Not with you. You did last year. Mm -mm. We did last year. Mm. <laughs> was what we talked about is what we normally used to talk about is that we would do after town meeting some sort of goal setting and which we don't ever seem to do and then we do the evaluation process and um, whenever we do it but anyway so my suggestion is that I think that the select board should have goals for sure um, and we just need to f figure I'm okay with whatever process we just need to figure out a process and stick with it I guess is my point and uh, is what I would like to see done. Um, I gave you my self-evaluation and you guys met without me, which makes sense, and, and did what you need to do. And then Chris, I assume, talked to other employees and got input, and which I always encourage you to do. So I do think the select board should have goals. Um, and you know, obviously, you choose what rock needs to get pushed uphill, and so I tend to do that. But I also have the job itself, which you know I'm, I'm versed in at this point. So um, but I just think there might be a I just think we need to figure out how we want to do this and, and then stick with that plan because it kind of changes and um, so, you know, so obviously why don't we I put serve that, it the pleasure. But, so I just don't know how you want to do it. Why don't we put that on the next meeting? Uh -huh. I mean, I guess I guess through doing quite 
Oops, there we go, sorry. So from doing quite a bit of these, I think what usually works the best on, on um, in my business, if we come up, if the select board picks. No, no sound. No oh, sound. still no sound? Okay. Uh, Hang on. <laughs> so now we're gonna get an echo, 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 echo. Mm -hmm. If we talk with an echo, does it go away? I don't know. Oh, she's back. She gave us the thumbs up. Right. Okay. Yeah, if we talk with it. <laughs> it might. So, I mean, I, I think one thing, uh, we can talk about it more at the next meeting. I think one thing that would be helpful is if we more or less identify, so say three goals or three areas that we'd like goals from her, is identify what, what those areas should be and then have Therese set a goal that she believes would fulfill that those areas, so I'll make it up, I don't know. If we say something about, you know, one of her goals should be something to do with, you know, engaging the small businesses in downtown, then she would come up with a smart goal for that, saying, yeah. I'm going to... Do whatever, yeah. Now, you know, the, okay. the, the easy thing is to say, I'm gonna go, you know, talk with 10 of them throughout the year, but the more specific might be to say, hey, I'm going to establish these two new relationships with these ones that I don't have a relationship with. Right, sure. I'll make so I think if maybe we make our, if we can at the next meeting come prepared to, what are three areas that we would like to see? You know, one could be something to do with um, building, um, you know, employee, I'm trying to think a couple things. So, you know. Like morale or team well, or development? Well, I mean, it could be. Right, it could be like employee development, you know, piece if you wanted to think, you know, about a, yeah. you know, work with Morgan or something, you know, yeah. I mean, and then allow you to set that, that goal Mayor, that you believe would. I mean, I, I really think if, if we could find a way to incorporate continuing education into our employees, mm -hmm. and that's right straight through from Kelly to Morgan to. Yeah. Which we do so much, yeah. They all, because, I mean, I have to do it to keep my license. Yeah. And Richard has to do it to keep his license. Kelly has to do it to keep her license. She has a class in June. AJ's and Morgan just, they all just got MSHA certified. And then AJ's going to a class to um, work because he was one, he's going to a class for um, municipal road general permit because there's going to be a new app about culvert and stuff. So, but yeah, but, but the employee development could be one of them. And, you know, obviously I know what the job is and I, and I do it and we, whatever comes up for topics is sometimes not even driven by us. It's driven by residents, you know, because mm. things come up and we have to address it. Obviously we're always looking at policies and the finances and just keeping the wheels on the bus. And obviously this project to develop the downtown would be a big project. Overseeing all the grant money is a big project and writing grants, but it, it's just helpful if we have, if we're all on the same page. And nothing really came up at town meeting. Like, nobody asked a question about the budget. Nobody, so we didn't really walk away from that with any big goals for myself or the select board. Yeah, exactly. and, and I would stay away Did from <laughs> I would stay away from projects as being goals because yeah. you're always going to have projects. So it's true. I agree. You know, I would, no, just, I, would, I would stick to more like the pillars of like yeah. developing direct reports and yeah. Um, or establishing community relations or something like that. And then if we, if, if, if we agree, like I, I would say we should come to agree on, you know, as a board of three areas, yeah. you know, broad areas. And, and then, then and then leave it up to you yeah. to figure out. Okay, that makes sense. What is the SMART goal that I wanna do? And then bring, yeah. and then we kind of agree and say, yep, yeah, that meets her SMART goal and, yeah, you know. Yeah, feasible. Yeah, that um, makes sense. And then I would stay away from the things that we know, the tangibles like, you know, phase two water, right? We know you're dealing with that. Yeah, so, exactly. and just you know, just that wouldn't be part of anything, you know, no. Mike. I agree, I think that but makes if that's sense. On, yeah, that can be on the next agenda. Yeah, yeah, so that makes sense. Because all the other stuff that we're yeah. dealing with, it's stuff you're gonna have no matter what. Yeah, exactly, I agree with that. So that makes okay. sense. And, um, and, and I think as a board, if we just figure out what those three areas are that we want her to do a measurable SMART goal, then. Yeah, that makes um, sense, I'm all for that. I just, it's hard because we have never, we kind of, reverse this every year. We've never really come away yeah. with the same process. One year we didn't do anything till the very end of the year. We just, because yeah. we're busy, you know, and we're moving on, so we forgot about it. So this year I was getting prepared, I was doing, getting ready to do all the employees. Their self-evaluations are due to me by the end of May, so I was like, oh, 
I gotta talk to the select board now. And I had mentioned it to Chris saying, we, we just gotta sort this out. <laughs> so that's why. Trees also mentioned uh, select board goals. Yeah. Uh, which would be different. Uh, which could be like the development of the downtown project, and that could be a big goal for you guys. Or do you want to see what are your goals for Bethel? You know, something you want to see that maybe you don't want to have goals. I just don't know what it is as a board. Like we used to have a visioning committee, weren't you on that, Chris? Started it, and it didn't go very far. There was just Lily and I. Yeah. <laughs> um, we started it. It went for about a meeting and a half, and then it was again. It was just Lily and I. There was nobody else, but yeah, I mean, you really need something like that. Um, so, I mean, I think it's good that, I mean, I think we should look at establishing some sort of goals for the year. I mean, um, everybody should have goals, right? Yeah. Um, and maybe looking through the Beth or connection mm. stuff, giving y'all maybe, you know, going through maybe something will jog your memory or, or jog, sure. you know, something in you. Yeah, more than get dressed and have a cup of coffee. Like my goal. Is <laughs> Another day. Get up, wake up. <laughs> First yeah. thing is to wake up. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Get up and um, sit up and take nourishment. And so I, I would just suggest we include that in our conversation. Yeah, I'll make a note. I'll put Next it on week. here too. Tom and Ann select work. Yeah, okay. it'll be a good, it should be a good meeting for it because yeah. I can't imagine that too much is going to come up between now and then. No, right now it's, so it's setting be... the water sewer budget. So Richard will be here. I'm not sure if you all know Richard. So Richard will be here. Um, uh, Jason Booth will be here. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like there's something else, but not, you know. Yeah, so we should be able to fit that in. Though. Yeah, yep, yep, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay. So, all right. Perfect. That's, it. That's all I got. Thank all you. All right. And select board meeting minutes from the 24th of April. Anybody have anything they want amended, or are we good to approve as written? I didn't see any, any problem. Move their approval as written. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All righty. And you did have a lot of other communications in there. Um, DRB, Planning Commission, Town Meeting Committee, and, mm -hmm. and all sorts of good stuff in there. Okay. And Anything else come before the board this evening? Nothing I can think of. You got anything, Denise? Yes. I got nothing. All right. Lindley, you got anything? All right, getting the thumbs up. Okay. Did you tell Peter that 70% of our town voted for him and now that he turned us down, we're going to have to rethink about <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to rethink that. <laughs> That's right. Now that you're not going to give us on. I thought for sure Camp Brook would be because it, because it affects two towns. I thought, you know. Yeah, it's a corridor. Road. Yeah, it's a federal highway. It used to be a federal highway. highway. No, it's a racetrack. I know. I just, I thought. You know, Contact maybe. the Indy 500, see yeah. if we can get some money. No, we might. Might. It might be benefit to us is to maybe talk with Rochester yeah, about I'm some sort of partnering right? grant because mm -hmm. their side is probably in some ways worse than our side and, mm -hmm. and neither town really has the money to no he might maybe hoof on that road maybe there's something if we both of us squawk a little harder maybe there's yeah maybe um, get further on this well, and maybe, you know, we have our project scope, so maybe he mm. would do a piece on his side. Maybe we could do yeah. a con congressionally district spend, like, together. Sometimes, yeah. So I can talk to Frank, but I think... And then we could gonna... submit it together for next year or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, that's maybe what I thought. Yeah. I'll talk More to Frank. More buy-in. Yeah, and the other thing, too, I think we're just going to have to start looking at is, like, you Turn said... Turn to dirt this, road? No, is to uh, mm -hmm. just start, like, ditching and doing <laughs> some of the things before that, but... I mean, just trying to slow people down on that road is just... Well, he, like, Dave's uh, road's better dirt than it was paved, so, I mean, he... I know. Uh, he's happy. Was for a little bit. Yeah, I like how it was. Until you get in that Ford F-250, it's not pretty right now. Yeah. But that, that's slowing the traffic down right now. We're 
No, it doesn't. No, because they get faster. <laughs> you get it faster and it hits the bumps at the same month. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's it. It's, you're darned if you do, darned if you don't. slow anybody no. down. You, know, <laughs> you grade it, yeah. you chloride it, they drive yeah. faster, they complain about potholes, then you yeah. pave it, then they're complaining because people are speeding. Like, if I can't. It's just the other thing I'd like to see on the bottom of Campbrook Road that I mentioned to you before. Those barbs? Spikes? <laughs> yeah, spike mats. I can make those. Um, no, it's less than three-tenths of a mile from the 40-mile-an-hour sign right after Watershed Road. It says 40 miles an hour. Less than three-tenths of a mile, there's that corner. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't realize or don't pay attention to the signage that you got to stop and I don't know how many cars mm -hmm. I've almost hit. Is there like a stop sign ahead or? One no, of that's what sign? I'd like to see yeah. that 40 mile an hour sign down and put a stop ahead sign. Mm -hmm. I mean, it says route 12 goes each way, but they don't pay attention and then they come around. I think it's that's annoyed. as you're coming down the hill. Coming down the hill. No, right after by the Watershed Road, oh, okay, right as soon there. as that corner, yeah. uh, is that Benoit sit on that? I'm not sure who owns that, um, okay. that house, but they come around that corner yeah. And Maybe there should be a so stop sign ahead sign. Yeah. Stop ahead and get rid of that 40 mile an hour sign because it's less than three tenths of a mile. Or you can okay. move. Maybe you can move the 40 yeah. sign right, down. into the brook. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, because we did a bunch of signage up there last year on the top, and because um, mm -hmm. people just don't stop. No. And it's because they don't realize they see 40 miles an hour. They think they got plenty of. Mm -hmm. of right. time the wrong, the wrong. yeah that's a good point point. and people coming from warren a friend of mine told me she used to go over roxbury mountain i believe yeah. and her daughter said no go over bethel mountain it's a lot easier so i think that's why there's more traffic because mm -hmm. they're going over bethel mountain because roxbury is dirt yeah. yeah. Well, some of it's saved. Well, near the bottom. But, the when you come into the but Warren people side, going to Warren and Waitsfield are going up over Camp yeah. Road. I know. And you can't, just trying to get truck traffic off, I mean, just anything. It, it's just been difficult. And then people complain, well, the road's really bad. Well, no kidding. Drive around. Yeah. <laughs> you know, take 107. It's beautiful. And yeah. uh, so that's what I not, tell people. Not right now it's not. Well, it will be. So. I just tell them that. <laughs> there is a big hole in the Class 3 road that goes out of the quarry. And I'm concerned that it's a failing culvert. That's oh, right. Morgan and <laughs> Morgan and AJ have already scoped it out, so they were aware of the hole and on Quarry Road. Yeah, it's actually an abandoned. Um, it's an abandoned culvert, so they're both aware of it, so they know they're going to address it. So I did ask him about it, and as I said, "Oh, it's something like Quarry," he goes, "Oh, I know what it is. There's a hole right there," and he talked to me about it. So they're aware it's there. Mm -hmm. so it's still there. I know. They'll deal with it. But yeah, they know about it. They actually, as soon as I said Quarry Road, they knew exactly what it was. So, so they're they're aware of it. Sir. Okay. Mm. All right. Anything else come before the board? Uh, the, the, we met, Therese mentioned it in passing, but uh, I attended the Energy Committee meeting last week. Yeah. And I think we're. Probably looking for a major reorganization of that committee. Oh, I'm sure you are. I mean, you have two members. There's Vincent. It'll have two. Nicole. Yeah. Well, what about? Um, it will have uh, Scott. Scott. Yeah. Okay. So it'll have Scott and Vincent. Oh, um, Nicole's good. Uh, so I, just a heads up. Yeah. Uh, that. Big that change. we are going, there are big changes coming with the energy committee, okay. and at this particular point, I don't think we can ask anything of them. Okay, I wonder. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, thank you. Thank I'll you meet with them next month to Let's see. Try to sort some things out. With okay. Them. All right. Well, thank you for doing that, Gene. I appreciate it. Isn't there uh, some special meeting at the end of this month? I mean, I keep getting emails. Yeah. Nicole's going to continue working with that project. Yeah. But not with the Energy Committee. Okay. So that project is, is still, still gone. It, it's the committee itself. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Of course, if you can find somebody to serve on it. Well, good luck. Like, we don't have. Who else left to ask? <laughs> so, I know we we need people on just about every. Probably the only fully staffed committee would be the conservation commission. So, mm. 
Well, all right. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All right. I'll second it. Andy. All right. We'll have a good evening, everybody. Thank you very much. See you, Lindley. See you, Lindley. Take care. Next week.